ask for homework, you will have to do an assignment about the digestive system. No late assignments will be tolerated, so you have to turn it in on time. Got it? You are dismissed. So, are you excited about the digestive system project? Are you kidding? No. Oh. Well, I am. I'm really excited. I mean, I don't have to do any research. I pretty much know everything about it, so yay. Well, of course you are. You're Kara. I mean, I have to do oh. a lot of research. Well, I mean, I can help you out. I can tell you everything about it that you need to know. It's not my porch. You can just talk about it. So, yeah, I can tell you everything I know about the digestive system. And then, that sounds oh, good. That's research. That sounds good? Yeah. Okay, so your fuel, more specifically your nutrients, help you to grow and stay healthy. You may not think of water as a nutrient, but it is very important for all living things. Another necessary nutrient is protein. Protein can be found in cheese, milk, and chicken. Protein is important because it helps your bones repair themselves and skin heal. Okay, so what are nutrients? What about them? Water and protein are very important, but they would never be useful if it wasn't for the digestive system. So, whether you're making a call to the pizza place to get some pizza, or you're doing whatever else you do in your free time, you're using energy, which you get from nutrients, which you get from food, which is digested by the digestive system. Your digestive system helps you absorb the nutrients from your food that you need. Here's how it works. Your mouth is sort of like a mortar, and your teeth are sort of like the pastel. Your teeth, or in this case the pastel, grind up the food very fine so that it can be swallowed. But of course, before you can do that, your salivatory glands kick in. To represent saliva, I used water. Once your food has been chewed to the point that it can be swallowed, it is called a bolus. So, once you finish chewing your food and you swallow it, your food goes into your esophagus. And your esophagus is sort of like a paper towel tube. It pushes the food out into your stomach. Did you know you can eat upside down? Thanks to your esophagus, you can. Since it pushes your food into your stomach, you don't have to rely on gravity to swallow. This process of food going from your mouth to your stomach is called peristalsis. So right here, representing the stomach, is a balloon. And I know a funnel isn't exactly the best representation of the esophagus, but I guess you get the picture. The esophagus shoves the food into your stomach, like I'm doing right now. Then, the bolus enters the stomach and the stomach releases lots of acids that help break down the food. It mixes and mashes the bolus until it is broken down enough to enter the small intestine. The small intestine is very long and coiled. Its purpose is to absorb nutrients from your food that you need. It is so long that you could probably play jump rope with it, not that you want to. The reason it is so coiled is because it is very long and if it wasn't coiled, we'd be really tall. Your average small intestine can be about seven meters. That's pretty long. That's how hard your body works to absorb as much nutrients as it can. Now, we didn't want to get too gross, but your small intestine isn't very pretty when it comes to looks, but it's very useful. Inside your small intestine, there are little hairs called villi that help absorb nutrients into your bloodstream. There are also little villi on top of the villi called microvilli that also help. After all the nutrients have been absorbed from your food, it travels into the large intestine, which is a lot thicker in diameter than the small intestine, 
but is a lot shorter. The average length of the large intestine is about 4 meters, which is a, a little over half as long as the small intestine. Its purpose is basically to turn your food into poo. The digestive system is really gross. It is, but it's really efficient. So, who discovered it? We actually don't know that, but we do know about two great men who helped find out a lot about it. Huh. It all started one normal afternoon when Alexis St. Martin got shot in the stomach. Nobody thought he would actually survive, but he did. And a man named William Beaumont decided to help him and said, Well, actually, he said something a little more like this. Doctor, I can save you. William Beaumont helped Alexis St. Martin get better, but Alexis St. Martin still had a permanent hole in his stomach. William Beaumont performed many experiments on Alexis St. Martin. Many of those experiments have benefited our knowledge of the digestive system today. So this science stuff, the digestive system, it's pretty cool considering it's school stuff, but it was pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting and want to go over it, like a little overview, so you know what you're learning? Sure. So here's what we learned. The process of food going from your mouth to your stomach is called peristalsis. Nutrients are also very important, like Protein, which helps your body heal. And water, that hydrates you. We also learned that you can eat upside down. So after peristalsis, we learned that the bolus enters the stomach, which has many, many strong acids that help break down the food that we chewed. Then it enters the small intestine, and then the large. And then... Let's just say you'll have to go to the bathroom sometime soon. We also learned about Alexis St. Martin, the guy who got shot in the stomach, and William Beaumont, the guy who studied him. So I guess that wraps up everything I know about the digestive system. Yeah, thanks. I know a lot. Thank you so much for telling me all of this. Yeah. I mean, that, that must have taken a lot of time, you know? Yeah, I have time in my hands. Sadness, 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 sadness